Welcome to Live Let Thrive, a podcast about the Airbnb life, the share economy, and everything in between. Here are your hosts, Micah and Steve. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome back to another exciting episode of Live Let Thrive. What's up, Micah, man? I'm good, Stevie Stacks. How you doing? Good, good. Where are you at? You look like a new location. Uh, old location from the same location as the last one podcast or the one before. So that, yeah, uh, I'm back in Arkansas. I am uh, finishing up my last two units. Uh, the insurance claim finally got that one fixed. We got everything back into it today. So we nice. get it deep cleaned on that one tomorrow. Hopefully get it relaunched. And then the big, huge property, we're just waiting on the AC to get fixed and we're ready to go. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, you've been going to uh, Arkansas quite a bit. So hopefully this is my last time coming for a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, my friends, is episode 215 of your favorite Airbnb, VRBO, booking.com, all that short term, mid term rental fun stuff in the world. Coming at you from Arlington, Texas. Well, actually, you're in Arkansas right now, but Arlington and Fort Worth and sometimes Arkansas and sometimes Guadalajara, Mexico, wherever we wherever we can hit a record button, that's where we'll be. And we have a special guest, Micah. Who we got? Stevie Stacks. We got, you almost forgot my name, Brooke Fouts on the show. Who is Brooke Fouts? Well, good thing he wrote a little bio for me to read. Uh, Brooke Fouts is one of the industry's foremost experts in growing vacation rental inventory he literally wrote the book on inventory growth and it's been and it's already a three category amazon bestseller oh snap brooke has got his got his start in the industry in 2007 when he co-founded vantage resort realty in ocean city maryland and took an idea on a napkin to more than 500 properties i'm Man, you wrote a lot of stuff here. (laughs) (laughs) Properties in just five years. After successful exit, he went on to grow inventory for other major vacation rental brands as chief business development officer in multiple destinations. Most recently, as an executive in the leading vacation rental software company in a leading. And he saw his first, he, he saw firsthand through mastermind groups that he launched and facilitated that worked and what worked and did what didn't for 20 of the largest and most successful companies in the country. Today, Brooke leads Vintory, V-I-N-T-O-R-Y, the first and only CRM and sales and marketing automation platform designed exclusively for vacation rental managers to grow their inventory at Vintory. A team of over 50 growth experts are laser focused on one thing, helping VRMs hit or exceed their inventory growth goals. Whew, that was a mouthful. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Brooke. And, and one thing real quick, I never, you know, on the Calendly, when I read these things, I've never had to scroll before. You made me scroll. Dude. It's, I didn't even know there was a scroll feature for, usually yeah. people say, yeah, I got about 10 Airbnbs and I do this and that and that's yeah. it. You, this is what happens when you have a marketing team and you say, hey, give me a bio and uh, <laughs> they write it. That's that's what it means. That's all it means, man. Well, excited to be here, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, that's man. My first question is, what's the name of your book? From zero to 500 properties in five years, your playbook for to grow your short-term vacation rental inventory. Wow. Okay. Over 3,000 3, copies sold on Amazon. So go go out and get one. All, all proceeds go to charity, by the way. So, Oh, that's wonderful, man. So why, why how did you get your start in the short-term rental industry? My gosh, how much time do you have? So, um... <laughs> I, so I won't go too far back, but I was in mortgage banking. Uh, that was my first career. Uh, started a company, grew up pretty, pretty fast, grew up, um, and I thought that was going to be my life forever. And uh, I was in a group called YPO, Young Presidents Organization. And then 2007, 2008 hit and, uh, you know, the, the great, uh, recession and, and pretty much, uh, I was in this group called YPO and a guy that was in my group came to me and said, Hey, Brooke, I'm reading the same headlines you're reading. And uh, the mortgage business didn't get any better. I've had this idea to start a vacation rental company for five years. I'm just waiting for the right guy to run it. I know you. I trust you. I like you. I want you to be my business partner. I'll put all the money into it and uh, let's go do this. And, uh, you know, I didn't didn't have a paycheck for about a year during that period and uh, said, you know, the, the opportunity looked pretty good. So 
started a company called Vantage Resort Realty down in Ocean City, Maryland, and didn't know anything about short-term vacation rentals other than the fact that I stayed in them. Um, so I live in Baltimore, Maryland. So every Monday I'd get in my car and drive down to Ocean City and just talk to anybody that was stupid enough to listen to me on kind of the vision and the idea. And uh, and then every Friday I'd drive home. And, and then on the summer, we'd move down there with the family. And uh, that was uh, that was kind of the start of it. And uh, it started a little slow, but we ended up go- growing it pretty quickly after a little bit. Man, that's <laughs> that's pretty cool that you so you were started off back in the early, early days of vacation rentals. Yes. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's definitely a new uh, new term now, new world, uh, new vernacular. Um, it's it's so funny. I, I went to a conference down in uh, Nashville, the, the, you know, Mike Showgreen and those guys. Great conference. Um, and it was just a it was kind of eye opening for me that when I started around asking about people if they ever heard of the Vacation Rental Managers Association or or Vera Mintel, they looked at me like I had three eyes and, the, you know, I had, they had no idea what I was talking about. But that's like <laughs> the old guard. You know, that's where I came from, where you came up and you joined VRMA and you went to the VRMA conference, which is a great organization. But, you know, these new uh, these these newer Airbnb, if you will, uh, hosts uh, know nothing about that. You know, it's it's kind of a, a fun new world. I, I love it though. I love it. It gives new energy to the industry for sure. So, so you saw, so you were there before even Airbnb was started. Yeah, Airbnb started right around the same time I did, but uh, we we didn't know very in the early years. We were not listing on Airbnb at all. We were listing on Homeway. I guess was the, mm-hmm. you know, and now it's funny because <clears throat> Homeway just launched and they just came out. And um, it actually, you know, a lot of people give pushback on 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 HomeAway and VRBO for really kind of, um, you know, they say hurting the industry and things like that. But it actually leveled the playing field for me. So when I launched Vantage, you know, I'm sitting here trying to figure out how the heck to market my property. And, you know, I, I've got this company sitting next to me called Caldwell Banker, who had 4,000 properties under management. Mm. And, uh, you know, here I am a little like startup literally right next door to them. When I say next door to them, we were 5,200 suite B, they were 5,200 suite A. Uh, <laughs> and I had zero properties and they had 4,000 properties. And, uh, you know, I'm going head to head and I'm like, how the heck am I going to compete against these guys? And I just started, I figured it out. I was like, well, if I were, if I were booking a vacation front on right now, what would I do? And I went online and I Google searched it. And sure enough, you know, uh, Homeway was one of the first websites that came up and said, I need to list on there. And and I listed every single property on there. And back in the day, the way it would work, it would, uh, you would, if you paid for more photos, that was how you kind of got ranked uh, higher. And we ranked and we ranked and we ranked and we took a, a you know, every property and every, you know, community we had. And we listed at the top, we got the 16 uh, photos, which was the max at the time. And we were at the top and I, we had tons and tons of leads. So we instantly leapfrogged and were able to go head to head against the, you know, the old guard, if you will. So where did you, where did you get these properties from? Well, we just, man, that's a long story. So, you know, we went out there and obviously went out there and tried to get acquired, but nobody wants to be the first, you know, property uh, listed in your rental program. Uh, So it was very, very slow in the early going. Um, I think we, it took us probably the first year, we might've had 16 properties under management, which, you know, in some companies that's a lot, but, you know, for what I've had to kind of, you know, my, my ruler, if you will, was Cobble Banker with 4,000 properties. Mm-hmm. So to me, you know, it was, it was, it was uh, I, I had kind of high hopes and high goals. And, um, you know, but once we started getting a little bit of momentum, I think it was probably by the beginning of like the second year, maybe, um, you know, maybe the 18th month, something like that. We had like 30 something properties and that's when the momentum started. Once people realized we weren't just going to like fold, we weren't going to, uh, you know, be a flash in the pan. Uh, we ended up getting some momentum and then it was just literally we were more than doubling every year. And, you know, just like the title of my book, we grew from zero to 500 properties under management in five years. Question nice. for you. You said VRMA. Can you explain to me like the audience what VRMA is and what they provide for people that are in the short term rental space? Yeah. So first of all, I'm, I'm not on the board of VRMA or anything like that, but I've been a member since 2007. Uh, VRMA stands for Vacation Rental Managers Association. It is a great nonprofit that really represents uh, the vacation rental industry. Uh, they do a tons uh, with advocacy work, you know, really with uh, trying to limit uh, and halt regulation. And they do tons with education um, and really just a, it's kind of a community to bring everybody together. 
um, you know, as as one and uh, have one solid voice. Uh, but I highly recommend that everybody, if you have any kind of short term vacation rentals, you join that organization because it ultimately does protect you. And it is the voice for the entire industry. Um, and there's just tons of great educational content and just the networking and the the, the kind of the camaraderie and, um, you know, meeting people when you go to these conferences is unbelievable. I mean, they have their uh, international conference in Vegas this year. I think it's October 20, roughly around like 22nd to the 25th in that range. Um, it's just a great, great, uh, great event. Yeah, I was supposed to be going, but my last trip is in, I think, September of the year, this year. But I do want to go to one. I think uh, they had one in Austin, I believe, not too long ago. But it was I, San Antonio last year. Um, yeah. It's a it's it's a great event. I mean, there's like I think close to 4000 people there. So it's uh, tons of sessions, tons of education. Again, obviously, great networking and a huge vendor hall. Just, you know, this is where everybody within the short-term vacational industry is. So if you want to learn about software, you want to learn about any kind of products and services, uh, that's, it's kind of the place to go. Definitely. Okay. So, so like, okay, you mentioned you're, you're picking up properties, picking up properties. So, so like picking up, what do you mean? You were, you were buying, purchasing them or you were arbitraging them or how, what were you doing exactly? That's so funny. That's, that's, this is where the, the old, uh, the old world and the new world are so different. Yeah. So in the, the old world, it was just traditional property management. I guess they call it now, you know, hosting oh, okay, uh, properties. Okay, okay. So yeah, I didn't own these properties. I wasn't <laughs> doing any kind of arbitrage. We were doing strictly just uh, traditional property management. Um, and uh, yeah, it works. It's a nice business model. And there's a lot of people uh, doing this right now, obviously all across the uh, the country, if not the world and making a ton of money for it. <laughs> me included <laughs> uh that that is cool man by the way at the at the nashville event did you uh i saw pictures of you and julie george that's where i know you from you're holding up yeah. your book next to her book you know yes. she's yeah trying, Julie trying big, big yeah. time you with her million dollar host yeah. on her cover <laughs> <laughs> yeah, julie, julie's a great person uh and we're we're actually gonna be doing a webinar here in uh, the next couple months uh co-branded uh together so uh keep a look out for that sweet oh, so how does one go from zero properties to 500 properties? And then not, you told me, you told us your story a little bit, but like a mortal poor, poor person like us, you know, how do, how do we go from zero properties to 500 properties in just five years? Man, uh, you read gotta, the book. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Read, read the book and it gives you the playbook to do it. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, it obviously comes down to you know, a lot of marketing, a lot of networking and things like that. Um, you know, but the, the first place is having a really a growth mindset, I think, and going out there and saying, all right, do I really want to grow? And I set from literally from day one, I built the performance out on exactly where I wanted to be. And I mean, I'm telling you almost to, you know, plus or minus 10%, we hit those goals from day one. Um, and it's just a matter of having that mindset of saying, this is the goals I want to hit. And then actually then just kind of reverse engineering to, to do that. But it, it's uh, it's a lot of marketing. And again, a lot of networking. Um, it does, you know, it, first thing is um, it all starts with data. You really have to have a really good list. I've heard 50% of all marketing just starts with, you know, starts with your list. So going out there and getting a good solid list, there's many different places you can get it. There's tax records, public records that you can go to. Uh, very often it's affiliated with the MLS. Um, if you don't have that or if it's challenging to get, what you can do is just go to a list broker. Um, there's a million different list brokers out there. There's Info USA, there's Exact Data, there's Melissa Data, there's tons of them out there. Just Google, you know, list brokers. But the key when you get list is you want to get absentee owners. So absentee owners is where, and it's an easy query whenever you go through a list broker, they know exactly what that means. It's where the mailing address and the property address are different. And that's usually a good indicator of a real estate investor. Um, so that's kind of a good uh, start. Um, and then after that, there's other places you can go. So um, one that's often overlooked is called vacation rental permit lists. So if your city or your county or your township requires a list, guess or requires a permit guess what there's a list out there for you um you just have to get it and sometimes it's challenging it's usually some 75 year old lady sitting behind a county courthouse you got a brown nose or with brownies or something like that to get it uh but you can get it and if they push back just mention these words freedom of information act if you mention those words they actually have to give you that list uh and that's a fantastic list because you think about these properties are already short-term vacation rentals um and then the last one just as far as data goes 
is uh, scraping data. So you can scrape any data that you want. Uh, you can, uh, I highly recommend if nobody uses uh, Upwork, I highly recommend checking it out. You can, it's a little website with freelancers where you can go out there and you can um, hire anybody. You can hire anybody to you know, hire people to scrape websites. So you can uh, scrape the large venture backed conglomerates. You can scrape the OTAs. You can scrape your competitors. You can scrape your competitors that were purchased by said venture backed uh, conglomerates, wink, wink. Um, so you can get all that information and then you can kind of overlay it on top of those tax records or those, uh, those list broker lists. And then you really have a really good kind of uh, database uh, to start with. But again, it all starts with that database and that list. So if you go get a absentee owners list, are you looking to manage their property? Like, let's say that they're just renting it long term. Are you looking to like manage it and turn it into a short term rental or a vacation rental? Yeah, so you get that list and, you know, so it depends on the market, right? If you're, you know, targeting a market like Outer Banks, North Carolina or Ocean City, where I was, you know, most of these properties are already short term vacation rentals anyways, or they're, you know, second homes and, you know, they haven't, you know, thought about renting or, or they're not interested in renting right now. And that's a whole nother conversation we can talk about with the recession coming up. Uh, some of those, you know, we call them first time Franks, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to start renting. But yeah, what you're doing is you're getting that list. And then you want to reach out to them in an omni-channel approach. And we can talk about what that means. Um, and then really just notify them and tell them, say, hey, you know, uh, this is why, you know, this is what we think your property can do. Uh, you know, reach out to me. We'll tell you why our, our services are better than anybody else um, and, and go from there. But you can do it. You know, you can kind of be creative in your marketing. Um, we can talk about that in a second. But if you want to do it on a traditional property management model, if you want to do it on an arbitrage model, um, but, you know, you can you can be very creative in your marketing to, to say the least. And so, and real quick, what did you, what, like for the non-tech savvy, what do you mean by scraping a website? Yeah. So what, what they'll do is, so these little tech nerds will go out there and they create these bots and these bots go and crawl the websites and it just pulls the information. So let's say it goes on to VRBO and it, uh, or Airbnb, and it just will go out there and it'll scrape all the property addresses uh, and then, you know, get that and then put it in, give it to you in a database format. I'll give it to you in like a spreadsheet. Um, but you're not done there. You got to do what's called a reverse append because that just the property address doesn't do you much good. You got to do what's called a reverse append where you're actually then matching it up to the, uh, the, the homeowner's name uh, and then the homeowner's mailing address. Um, and then so then you can actually reach out to them because once you have their mailing address, then you can actually start sending direct mail to them. Uh, if you have their name and their property address, you can then go out there and, you know, about 40 to 60% of the time you get their emails and their phones, which you can then do a lot of other different marketing from, from that perspective too. That's beautiful. Okay. Now, what kind of properties you're going from zero to 500 right now, when you're growing that fast, you know, you're, I know sometimes systems become, you know, hard to maintain. Like what kind of properties are you targeting for? targeting and then we can go into systems after that but yeah the properties are you so these are traditional vacation rental leisure market second homes you know um kind of property so ocean city give you an idea is a nine mile strip of sand with twenty thousand condos all within less than like a quarter mile of you know the beach so these are traditional vacation rentals um you know in a in a leisure market um so you know we, we would go out there and obviously you know reach out to them and tell them about, you know, listing their property in our, in our rental program. Um, but, you know, we, when we first started, you know, going back to kind of the scaling question. So I first started this, I didn't have any kind of, you know, plan. I didn't have like a, a you know, a, a niche based mo uh, model or anything like that. But what we would do is just try to get anybody to sign up. And then I realized very quickly that some properties were worth a lot more than other properties. And, you know, we were getting kind of the, the bad, I called it like the bad news bears properties, you know, the properties that nobody else wanted. <laughs> and we were working our butts off to get $20,000 a year in rental income from this property. And when the guests got in there, all they did was complain about the property the entire time. Mm -hmm. So I learned pretty quickly, like, hey, let's, you know, let's work smarter, not harder. And what we ended up doing is, and again, this probably took me about two years, but we realized that there was about five different communities that were the best communities, the best buildings in Ocean City. These were newer buildings, newer construction, which meant usually newer furniture, you know, and it were better shape and condition. And they did obviously higher, uh, you know, gross booking revenue. So we ended up realizing, let's focus on these. So we just focused on those five buildings for the most part for our marketing. 
And we actually did some really creative things um, to kind of focus on those communities. So we actually built out micro landing pages or micro websites. So websites and uh, landing pages specifically for those buildings. And the idea originally was on the guest side was to do this to, to market for the, the guest. And, you know, uh, we actually in one case, you know, there was a, a building called Belmont Towers, which is on the boardwalk of Ocean City, but very highly desirable it was only one of the few buildings that was brand new. And we actually built out, you know, they didn't have a logo. So we actually designed a logo for this building. <laughs> and to this day, 15 years later, 20 years later, that 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 uh, logo is still being used by the building now that I designed to build from my website that I wanted to, to use. Um, but what ended up happening is a nice little like unintended consequence, which was a, a benefit, was this became a great source of generating owner leads. So we have these websites and it felt like it was the official management company uh, of that building. So owners would come to it, they would Google their building and they would see our website that we built. And then they would say, hey, I've got to be listed here. And they would actually come to us and say, hey, I want to list my property on there. And I'd find out they were listed with, you know, said Caldwell Banker next door. And I'd say, well, the only way you can get listed on uh, belmonttowers.com is you have to be under, uh, you know, the management of Vantage Resort Realty and ended up working. So that strategy, and again, it had nothing to do with intelligence or or anything like that. It was just dumb luck and just being scrappy, you know, when you're 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 poor and scrappy and broke to, to figure out how to to do this stuff. So with you managing like five hundred of them going across, like in this small town, like what's your systems like? Are do you have like one cleaning company? Are you doing a lot of cleaning turnovers? Like what's your system like to just manage all that? Well, early on, excuse my friend, it was a shit show <laughs> to say the least. You know, <laughs> we literally were just like, we had no idea what we were doing. You know, we were just winging it. Um, now, I, I will be very, very candid and, and open. And I've always admitted this. Uh, I was very lucky. My, my business partner uh, owned a, a large travel vacation club and he already had a lot of inventory in the market. And he actually, you know, started a cleaning and maintenance company right around the same time. So Luckily, I didn't have to focus on that. Like I let, I just kind of used him for the cleaning and maintenance um, and his company for the cleaning and maintenance. And I just focused on more of the, you know, the marketing and the marketing, not only to owners, but also to guests and just that guest hospitality experience and let his, you know, cleaning and maintenance company do everything on the back end. Now, with that said, it's, you know, everyone would say, oh my gosh, that must be fantastic. You don't have to worry about that. But here's the thing. We had to use that company. So they knew it from their perspective was they knew they had a captive audience. So they didn't really have to work that hard. And they, you know, they didn't have the best uh, service. So, and that was a reflection of me and my company and what we were trying to build. Uh, so I had to use the, you know, so here I am in a position where I have to use this company and they know I have to use them and they don't have to provide that great a service. Um, so it just put me in a bad spot uh, very often. And, uh, you know, but it, it, it did make my focus a little bit easier where I could just focus on, like I said, on the marketing, both the owners and guests, and then also the hospitality experience. Hmm. Yeah, I hear that a lot. Like um, these uh, uh, short term rental management companies go into uh, an area, I don't know, let's just say like a bunch of cabins, but it's always been cleaned by the same cleaning crew. And you kind of inherit them, right? <laughs> when you're buying these cabins. And then um, it just it never works out. You just got to end up firing them all, man. Because yeah. I mean, they, they can't, that's how they've been doing it for years. And they're not going to change for you, right? Yeah. I think we did at one point get the opportunity uh, kind of like, I think I went to my business partner who owned the cleaning and maintenance company. I said, Hey, I can't do this anymore. You know? And he said, all right, you know, let it be open market then. And you can use whoever you want. And that actually, that did help. And it, it lifted up their game and they did step up to it, but we had to kind of do a little bit of the takeaway uh, for them to kind of uh, step up. Man, you know, it, it reminds me too, when you're coming into these markets, right, these old uh, leisure markets, sleepy, you know, beach towns, whatever, um, that have been doing it the same way for years. I, I It reminds me, I mean, even to this day, it's funny because I we, we go to uh, South Padre Island a lot. That's like we, you know, my, my a lot of my family is from South Texas. So we always go there and we, we and we love it. But there's still some old school, you know, sets of condominiums that, hey, you, you might get one roll of toilet paper. You might get napkins. You maybe get a, a coffee filter, maybe. But you, you get there and, and and it's just like they don't give you anything. You know, <laughs> you don't have nothing to cook with. You know, I mean, it's just old school. Just uh, go go to the store and you have to go buy a shit ton of stuff just to just to stay there for a week because they don't give See, you nothing. 
Steve, that's what I was going against in Ocean City. It was like nobody, here was the thing. Nobody had, nobody got a roll of toilet paper. Nobody got any paper towels. Nobody got linens. And I came in here saying, I'm going to totally do something different here. I was going to do something so unique, you know, and I, again, nowadays, this is like, is like, you know, it's kind of like a duh moment, you know, but, and I, like, if you wanted <laughs> to get sheets, this is how it was back then. If you upgraded the sheets, you know what they would do? Literally, like during like the first day of your stay, somebody would drop by in a black garbage bag. They would drop off the sheets and give them to you and hand them over to you. Say, here you go. That was their <laughs> that was their idea of hospitality. So this is what I was going against. So when I went out there and I said, look, I'm go- I want to provide like what you would find in a three star or four literally not five star like what the 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 things that you would find in a three star or four star hotel I want to provide. So we offered sheets and towels. Not only sheets and towels. But we made your bed. We didn't give them to you in a black trash bag, right? We gave you toilet paper. You know, we gave you paper towels. We gave you starter sets of like, you know, soaps and shampoos and things like that. And this was like, and people thought I was crazy for doing this. They say, Brooke, you don't understand. It doesn't isn't done this way in Ocean City. And I'm like, that's exactly what I'm going for, you know. And I brought, we actually paid this one intern, this one kid. We actually delivered USA Today's on everybody's doorstep, you know what I mean, every single morning. So we had a block of uh, USA Today's delivered on our uh, our office. And then I had this kid that would go up and down Ocean City and he'd deliver USA Today's sitting them on there. We had, if your building didn't have a gym in it, we offered, we, we partnered with Gold's Gym and everybody got a free gym membership. So we, pro- wow. we were trying to differentiate. And the irony was, again, kind of what I talked about with those uh, micro sites. The goal was to do this for the guest originally, but guess what ended up happening? The owner loved that, the, the prospective owner. And they felt, you know what? They're going to bring in a higher class guest. They're going to get me more per night. And it became, you know, again, unintended consequences. It became our owner acquisition strategy. See, and I think that's what, I think that's where a lot of like uh, just with the Airbnb host, I think that's what they lack. Like, hey, partnering with gyms, partnering with people around the community. Differentiate. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and if you could check that little gym but uh checkbox on Airbnb, that helps your business. And yep. a lot of people haven't taken that step to do that. And that we talked to a guy named Doug a few weeks ago, and that's how he built his whole business. He built his whole business off partnering with everyone around you, and then you can not only make a profit from that, but you're providing a better experience for the guests. I love that. Yeah, you got to do something to differentiate your property than everything else and your company from everything else. Again, not only from the guest perspective, but also for the the new owner, if you're trying to manage that property. Mm. I remember there, <laughs> the early days of Airbnb, and I got it in after, after, way after you, but <laughs> people would, yeah, I, see, I didn't, you know, I, I got into it, I guess, when, when, they, when I started staying at Airbnbs and they started providing stuff like that, right? And I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. And then I started my Airbnb after, you know, much uh, poking and prodding from Micah. He told me to go ahead and just jump in and do it. So I did it. And, I, and that was a big question that would come up a lot in the earlier days is, hey, uh, do we need to bring our own sheets and towels and pillows? And I was like, no, we, we got all that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it was just people were so used to that being a vacation rental bringing your own shit right mm. and then um toilet paper and all that stuff you know and i'll give them two rolls and then that's good enough <laughs> although although i just got so i have a property my own personal property in bethany beach delaware the guest that just checked out she, the day she checked in she goes uh excuse me when will you come in and replace the towels <laughs> yeah and yeah. i'm just like and my response you know i was like you know i'm so sorry for any miscommunication you know what i mean this is not a hotel you know you start but we do have a washer and dryer if you choose and like and laundry detergent if you wish to wash them on your own but i mean the fact that like she asked that i was like in my initial response that when i mentioned to my wife and i told her about the text i'm like it's in the hotel lady you know like <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that's, that's, a, a, that's yeah. another thing that's starting to really come up too uh, with, you know, I think Airbnb has just grown so much. People think it's a household name, but then now you have these new people who've never used it. I get that too. Like, Hey, uh, we need more towels. I'm like, uh, we can't really provide you more towels. I'll, we do have a washer and dryer and uh, people are starting to like ask. I don't know if, if you've experienced it too, Steve, people start asking you for stuff like, Hey, by the way, uh, like someone who stayed a month, we stayed, we ran out of soap. I'm like, all right, yeah. there's a Walmart down the street. <laughs> let me, let me, let me. Let me drop a pin for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's starting to come up too. So it's it's funny how the, the even the Airbnb side starting to really evolve, you know, with so many people getting on the platform. 
That is cool, man. Um, so I wanted to ask, you mentioned it earlier, omni, omni channel approach. What does that mean? Yeah. So, um, all right. So once you have this data, you know, then you, what you do need to do is get in front of these targets. So how do you get in front of these targets? Um, so what we recommend and what we do here at Ventory, uh, the, the company that I own, is we help professional short-term vacation rental managers grow their inventory. And what we do is we execute this omni-channel marketing approach on behalf of our partners. We call our customers partners. So it's a, it's a combination of direct mail, and I can go through each one of these. Email, we manage their pay-per-click and all their AdWords campaigns. We do what's called list-based retargeting. Um, we do uh, IP targeting and then retargeting. So first of all, I'll go through each one of these. So the first is direct mail. So direct mail actually still works. Direct mail, the vacation rental industry is actually one of the industries where, <laughs> where direct mail does work because again, you do have the target. You do have their home address and you can send in a consistent manner you can send direct mail. It's a combination of postcards. It's a combination of uh, traditional, like just uh, letters and things like that. You can even do some really creative things. We actually have a, a, a vendor that we use that does uh, these robots that write handwritten letters that looks just like a traditional handwritten letter. You'd never know anything different. But the key with direct mail is consistency. You just have to, you know, you can't just send out one letter, one postcard and say, oh, it didn't work. You just, you, everyone's at different phases of the buyer journey. It, the idea is to just nurture them and move them along in that buyer journey. And you only need about one half of 1% response to 1% response for the, the math to pencil out. And we can talk about the numbers and things like that later. The second one is email. So email is challenging because there's a, definitely an art to it. Um, you want to make sure you're using some kind of software that actually, you know, it's not going to go to spam filters. You want to make sure you're following all the kind of the spam, you know, laws and things like that. Um, but again, when we talked about the data, we talked about getting, you know, uh, doing the reverse append to get emails and phones. And this is obviously one reason why you want to get those emails. But again, you want to drip information. You don't want to like, it's not, it can't be a really hardcore sale. It's got to be more of like informational. So this is where you partner with like air DNA or key data dashboards and you get information and you're just giving market reports, you're giving information. So you're kind of position, positioning yourself as the authority in that market. You know, what's going on. Um, and then next is AdWords, you know, PPC. So um, the a couple of key things with PPC um, PPC is great because it has people have like really high intent. If someone's Googling, you know, Airbnb management, Ocean City, Maryland, or property management, you know, Destin or whatever it happens to be, that's usually pretty good because that means there's high intent. They're looking to take action. The problem is there's so little search volume. We're only, we're only talking, you know, as a percentage of um, on the guest side, I mean, we're talking like fractions. We're one to you know 2% of, uh, of what the guest side is. So what you need to do is you need to cast a really wide net um, and you need to make sure you get the right key uh, word. So we actually have kind of, found like the top 50 to 75 keywords. And we just found those, we have a whole digital marketing team uh, on our staff. And we found that using Ahrefs and SEM Rush are a couple of tools that you can do to find out what are those right tool, uh, those search terms that people are looking for. But again, use those tools, Ahrefs and SEM Rush, and you wanna make sure you're casting a really, really wide uh, net. Um, up next is called list-based retargeting. So this is like, I love this. This is fantastic. Very, very, very few people do this. So this is, again, when you go back and you have that list, if you have their emails and their phones and their names and their address, you can upload that list into Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn, and you can do what's called list-based retargeting, where you're serving up ads directly to your target's feed. So this is not like lookalike audiences. This is not triangulating it and things like that. You are actually serving it up directly on their feed. So think about it. You just sent the person, uh, well, you start with this. You, you, know, you, you have this on their feed. You then hit them with a direct mail piece. You then hit them with an email. Like you're just in front of them. They're like, man, this company is everywhere I go. Um, and it works in a compounding effect. You get like a boost effect by doing it in tandem. And we try to time it up, uh, you know, in, in a certain cadence. Um, and then the next one is called IP targeting. This is like, if the CIA ever got into marketing, this is what I think they would do. So <laughs> you can actually get the, again, if you have the homeowner's name, you have their address, what you can do is you can upload that to the uh, IP uh, software and you can actually get their IP address. And now what you can do is you can serve up your ads as they surf the web. So millions of websites. So websites like ESPN, Fox News, Weather Channel, CNN, 
their local news stations and things like that. I'm sure you've seen it everywhere, all the ad networks. You can serve up those ads of your management company directly on their uh, their websites as they're surfing the web. It's not 100% match. It's about a 99% accuracy, but it's not 100% match. So you may only get a 40 to 60% match, but that's still pretty pretty decent if you think about it. So you're serving it up on their, uh, on their as they're surfing the web. You're serving it up on their social feeds. You're hitting them with email. You're you're hitting them with the direct mail piece. So they're like, man, this company is everywhere. They must be mm. really good. Little do they know you're only targeting a very select target of people that you know are short-term vacation rental owners. And again, when we talked about those lists before, you can segment those lists any way you want. So you can seg, especially when you scrape the OTAs, I can say, you know what? I only want to target properties that are listed on VRBO that have an ADR of $800 or more per night that are four bedrooms and they have a pool. And I want to serve up these ads directly on their feeds and just blast them and just blast them month after month after month. And then you know, you're going to get uh, you know, a good return. And um, the value of these contracts is unbelievable. Um, it's so valuable. Uh, I'll give you a couple of quick little stats here. So first off, the average management company. So I was on a panel with a guy named Jacoby Olin, who uh, works for C2G Advisors. So they are the number one M&A uh, company in the short-term vacation rental industry. They've sold more M&A, done more M&A transactions than anybody in the business. They sold $185 million worth of uh, vacation rental management companies last year. And Jacoby, I was on a panel with him down in Austin at a conference a couple of months ago. He said the average contract on aggregate, if you look, was worth $33,000. So that means if you start a short-term vacation rental company and you build up a portfolio and you have this nice portfolio of management uh, contracts that you're you know, uh, managing, the average contract was $33,000 last year. So you can do the math on what that's worth. Um, it's, it's pretty valuable. So 100 properties under management, that, that company is worth about $3.3 million. Um, you can sell, and there's, there's countless private equity companies out there. It's amazing coming out of the woodwork that are looking to acquire management companies. They are just, there's tons and tons and tons of money out there uh, looking for management companies to buy. So there is not a better time in the industry than right now to start a short-term vacation rental and, uh, management company. Now, now what, well, one thing on that, because I've thought of that before, um, you know, building up a portfolio of, of, of properties we manage and stuff and then someone comes along and tries to purchase it like you said you said thirty three thousand. i was like shit what if they gave me five or ten thousand that's pretty good for if i have a hundred a hundred properties right um but i guess the thing was is this that these these clients that we have you know trust that are just rentals is, is managing for them how do you go and say oh by the way uh someone else is going to manage you now peace out how, how does that work yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, you want to make sure you find a company that has the same values and morals and ethics that you do. And there's a lot of different companies out there. There's the large venture back conglomerates, the Vacasas, and 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 you know, well, not Turnkey anymore because Turnkey was acquired by Vacasa. Um, but there's you know V Trips with uh, you know Steve Milo. V Trips is acquiring companies left and right. I mean, every every week seems like he's buying at least one or two new companies. Um, and then there's some there's a lot of private equity companies out there that are flying under the radar that nobody's ever even heard of and that you can still stay on board. Um, you know, and I, I, I know countless of them, uh, companies that will allow you to even stay on board. So if you want to maybe take some chips off the table and get a nice little check and then work for them uh, and do that, you can. But again, you want to align yourself with a company that, you know, has kind of a good track record. And, and I would go out there and talk to other companies um, that have done it. And, you know, look, you can go to the, your, your owners and say, look, you know, I, I was a I had multiple companies reach out to me and wanted to acquire me. And I said no to most of them, but I, you know, I found a really good fit with this company. They had, they, they, they felt like they had the same culture that I did. And they, you know, I look, I called and did my due diligence on the previous companies that they acquired. Um, and they did a great job. And, you know, this is the reasons that I chose to, to be with them and why I decided to partner with them. You know, you know, it's crazy. And it reminds me of, um, man, this was about six or seven, uh, five or six years ago. And, and, and um, like uh, we've always been, I, I mentioned Padre Island again. We all we've always been going down there, and, and, you know, uh, vacationing. And um, we started looking for places to buy, you know, because we wanted to have a spot over there. And anyways, my agent's boss, <laughs> they had a, a old school rental company on the on the island, right? Old school where you you show up there, say, hey, I need a place. What do you got? And they pull up in their book. Okay, we got one here. 
uh okay i'll take that one here okay here's the keys and here's a stack of towels uh you know it's over there on this <laughs> you know old school right and it's and so they weren't on airbnb they weren't on anything and um anyways long story short he uh he was gonna sell like he had a, he had a little little bitty motel there he's gonna sell that and he's gonna he's gonna sell all the uh the the places that he was managing he wanted to sell the rights to the to manage those spots right and at the time i was just dipping my toe in airbnb i didn't i didn't have a management company yet and so she said well if you you know he has a, he is about 20 um condos that on the beach on the beach that he manages and he said he'll he'll sell them for 500 bucks a pop and, <laughs> and i was like thinking back like holy crap man i could have bought 20 of them for 500 bucks <laughs> a pop and i could be managing and old school management i mean i think on the beach they charge like 30 percent, right so <laughs> like yeah and so of course i would have you know turned them into you know modernized them and actually gave people toilet paper and napkins and stuff like that <laughs> but but i just now you're saying 33 grand for a, a unit i'm like god dang i could have got 500 bucks a unit back then well that's yeah that was, should have done it i guess uh, <laughs> yeah the hindsight it, it's funny because um, you end up, you know, hearing these stories about, um, you know, people complain about uh, realtors, you know, paying referral fees for realtors and things like that. So no, people complain about like realtors, uh, you know, like paying a referral fee for a realtor and things like, oh my gosh, I don't want to pay them 200 bucks or 300 bucks. But again, if you look at what that contract is worth, dude, pay it all day long. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? 100%, you know, uh, you know, pay it, but here's another thing. So it's not only about what the, the value of those contracts are, um, you know, at exit, it's also about the annuity that you're building out. Right. So here's, I'll give you some, some other quick math. So what we found after, you know, you know, we have over 345 companies on our platform right now. And what we found, um, again, looking at this of 300, you know, over 300 different companies, the average management company um, nets about 10, 10 to be, 10 to 15 percent of the gross booking revenue falls to the bottom line as net profit. So I'll break that down for you. So if you have a property, so let's say a new owner comes to you and wants to list his property with you, you project it's going to do about fifty thousand dollars in gross booking revenue. Um, that means that you're going to end up making a net profit about between five thousand and seventy five hundred dollars a year, not in commissions, but in net profit. That's what falls to the bottom line. Now, of course, it depends. You, you have some, if you're in startup mode and you only have a handful of properties, obviously that might not be the case. And if you're a larger company, you know, you might be closer to 20%, you know, falls to the bottom line. But again, the net net profit doesn't matter if you're a, a short-term vacation rental manager in, in Aspen where you're charging 50% commission, or if you're in Ocean City, Maryland or Outer Banks, you're charging 13% commission. The net what falls to the bottom line is always that 10 to 15 percent because you have other other ways that you can monetize through cleaning fees and, and, and guest fees and reservation fees and things like that. So think about that. So you you sign up a property that does 50 K, you know you're gonna make, let's just keep the numbers simple. You're gonna make 10 percent. That, that's five thousand dollars. Now, what's the lifetime value? How long does that property stay in your rental program? What we found, again, after looking at over 300 different companies, the average property stays in a rental program for 10 years. So five thousand dollars per year stays in a property for uh, stays in your program for ten years. That means the lifetime value for that one property is fifty thousand dollars. Now a lot of this depends on your your margins, and a lot of this depends on your churn. What percentage of your inventory do you lose every year? But if you follow with that industry averages, um, that's what it comes out to. So here's the hack. You'll probably recognize the math on this. So whatever the gross booking revenue is, and um, is what your profit will be over a lifetime value. So if you sign up a property, it's going to do 75K in gross booking revenue. Your lifetime value in profits is $75,000. Um, and that's assuming 10% margins and 10% churn. And that's what the industry average is. So next time someone calls you up and says, hey, will you manage my property? And you estimate it's going to do about $100,000 in gross bookings. Just know in the back of your mind, sink, that's $100,000 in gross booking revenue or 100% in our 100 thousand dollars in net profits i'm going to make over the lifetime of that property so again these contracts are super valuable again not only from the annuity aspect of it but then you're making this annuity every year and then when you decide to sell your company you're going to get that thirty three thousand dollars when you go to sell and, and knowing that how, how should a property management company build their contracts call vintory of course <laughs> call it call it what call vintory 
Me. Oh, come come on. On. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come exactly. On. That's what we do, man. That's what we do. We we help short. The, here's my plug. I get one plug. So Ventory helps short-term vacation rental managers grow their inventory. We've got over 50 employees on our team that this is all we do. We take the playbook that I built from starting uh, some starting Vantage and we've built it into a system. So it's one part marketing services, one part marketing agency, one part software platform um, that really helps uh, these short-term vacation rental managers grow. So, and the real reason I did it and the real reason I started this was the level of the playing field. I wanted to give all the tools that these large venture back companies had, like the Vacasas and the Turnkeys and Evolves. I want to give all the tools that these companies had to the average small mom and pop shop and let them go head to head, toe to toe and compete and win. Um, and that's what we've done. So we kind of, you know, for less than the price of a part-time assistant, we give you all those resources and tools that you need uh, to, to do that and go ahead and grow your inventory. Now, I have a question because <laughs> you may have the, uh, the expertise on this, right? So it sounds like in the short-term rental space to really sell your company, you need to be in the property management side, right? Now, you, you, I know you went to the short-term rental wealth con with TJ and Noble and all those guys. Now, have you started to see maybe, you know, have you started to see people wanting to actually buy arbitrage companies? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a little bit riskier, obviously, uh, doing that. But I think, look, I, I would think that there is a good way to launch your company by getting in with arbitrage to kind of help. Remember, I said before, it was really hard for me to get in, you know, break into the industry and get nobody wants to be the guinea pig. I yeah. think it's actually a good way to, you know, the proverbial prime the pump um, is to go in there and do arbitrage uh, and get a couple of properties under management. But I think for the the long term, I think again, I think over the long term, the best man, the best kind of business model is to do it in a traditional property management model. Doesn't say that you know people, it's not going to work on arbitrage, but I mean like isn't the definition of arbitrage. It eventually kind of finds the mean. It ends up going to back to the, that mean. Um, and it ends up, you know, kind of, you know, f failing away. So I, I, you know, I have no problem with starting out that way. Um, and I'll be candid with you. So, you know, it, it, we kind of used arbitrage in a slight way to kind of launch our business. Um, so my business partner owned this travel vacation club, and that's exactly what he would do. He would rent properties and then he would make them available. He had 80,000 uh, members in his vacation rental uh, club. Um, and then he would make these properties available for him. So what we would do is we would send out letters and would say, hey, we have a tenant that's very interested in leasing your property. Please call me. We can discuss the terms of the lease. It was a very simple handwritten letter. And that stupid little letter got the phones to ring, man. And they would call and we explain the terms. And most of the times they would laugh at us because the offer was so low. I mean, they were like, I can make that in a week, what you're offering me in a season. But we would say, oh, well, I understand your property is probably too nice for this program. Let me tell you about my traditional, uh, you know, re retail, we call it a retail, uh, you know, our weekly vacation rental uh, model. And we went into the benefits of it. We talked about how we actually made the beds. We had, we talked about how we had a, you know, uh, soaps and towels and paper towels and all those other things. And we also talked about how we had a USA Today sitting on the doorstep every morning for the guests, free gym membership and all those other things, free concierge. Um, and and that ended up getting them. So it was, I don't want to say it was bait and switch, but it got the people to ring. And we did actually sign up a lot of those contracts, uh, but it had to be the right property. But again, it did allow the phone to ring. And then we can kind of, we could, we could switch it and we can kind of tell them all the benefits of our short-term vacation rental program. But here's one thing I, I, I like, just a, a little side note, you know, I, I believe we're heading into a recession if we're not in one already. Um, and I launched Vantage in 2007, 2008. Well, 2007, 2008 was the Great Recession, the worst recession our generation has ever seen. I honestly believe I would not have been able to grow as fast as I did if I didn't launch during a recession. Mm. Um, it was it was unbelievably helpful for us because people that had no intentions of renting had to start renting. Financial circumstances changed and they were forced to have to rent. So we called this persona first time Franks. 
These are people that never <laughs> rented before. And guess what? I was first time Frank. I was the epitome of first time Frank. You know, I was in the mortgage banking. You know what I mean? I literally, my wife said, I'm never renting out my, you know, our vacation home or, or our personal home. Uh, and I said, well, honey, it's either that or it gets foreclosed on or we give it back to the bank. You know, it's like <laughs> you have no choices. And we ended up renting it out. And, you know, 15 years later, this, you know, property has been in the rental program ever since. And, um, I, you know, we had about 25% of the properties that we signed up in that period were from that persona. And Homeway actually did a study with, along with another uh, uh, company. And I can't remember the name of the company they partnered with back then. And they said that during that period, up to 49% of the new inventory that was on the VRBO platform, home away platform was from, and they, uh, the people surveyed said they had no intention of ever renting out their home. And we are, we are going to be going into this right now. So I just wrote an article for focus wire. Uh, it's online. I'm happy to you know, share it. You can put it in the, share, uh, in the show notes. And it talks about how in during recessions is the best time ever to grow your short-term vacation rental inventory because people, again, that have never rented before, those first-time Franks are going to have to rent. And you know, you all know how many people bought these second homes during COVID, you know, flushed with cash, cheap interest rates. And it was like, it was like heyday. And they bought these homes with no intentions of running, renting them out. Well, guess what? We're getting ready to hit a recession. These they're gonna a lot of these people are gonna be forced to have to start running them out. So I would say this is a good opportunity to go out there and start looking for inventory. Mm. Man, dropping gems, Micah. Yeah, that was a good one. I think that. That was a really good one. I, I, I guess go back real quick, real quick to this. And I don't want to harp on. I know you said, you know, higher, higher inventory, which I'm, I, I want to talk to you after the show. I want to get to get the information and it gets to, and get to that 500 mark. Um, so, so how do you, how does inventory uh, help you build out the contract where it's actually worth something instead of, Oh, we're just we'll sign a six month contract with you and you can manage or three months or six months or one year. How do you make, how do you, how do you sign the contract where it's, where you're able to, it's kind of like as an asset, something that you, you will be able to sell in the future. Yeah, well, you don't need to, I mean, you don't have to have a 10-year contract for that contract to be valuable. What they're looking for, I mean, typically, you know, a typical, typical contract, you're probably going to be a year contract. But honestly, it comes down to your performance. What is your churn on a given year? Um, you know, what are you retaining? Uh, uh, what percentage of your inventory are you retaining? And that's what they're going to look for. Um, they're not going to necessarily look for, you know, what kind of clause do you have to kind of keep them in? Because here's the reality. If somebody wants to leave, they're going to leave. Mm. You know what I mean? You can't force them into it. Um, and, you know, I always say that with our partners right now that we deal with. It's like, look, if somebody really complains, are you going to let them out? And they're usually like, yeah, most likely it's not worth it. You know, um, you know, they might have to honor reservations that are in there or something like that. But it just comes down to your historical performance. It's just like a, a SaaS businesses right now, software as a service businesses. That's what they look at is they're going to look at their retention. And the same thing's going to happen here. Um, typically, again, we, we see the retentions about 10 percent uh, as an industry. Um, and, you know, if you're, you know, it's going to be a little bit higher in the last, you know, two years, just because the real estate market's so hot, uh, it's going to be closer to 15% uh, to maybe even 20%. If you start getting over that, I would not necessarily focus so much on growing new inventory. I'd focus more on, you know, your, uh, your, your, uh, your churn, because you got to think about it, you got a leaky bucket and rather than getting a bigger picture, you know, you should probably figure out how to fix that leaky bucket first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's deep <laughs> that is that is cool man so um man you, you've touched on so much stuff um do you I, and i was thinking about you you said that early 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 days you're picking up properties that weren't so desirable right and you weren't you wouldn't you didn't even think about helping them like renovate them or nothing like that you just like yeah, screw that i'm gonna get some better properties well you know so Ocean City had a weird, or Maryland had a weird thing where you didn't have like a perpetual uh, license or uh, uh, contract. You actually had to get a new contract signed every year. And so what we ended up doing is at the end of every year, we would bench rank all of our properties. And we did it by uh, three different categories. So we would do uh, by revenue generated to the company. We would do by uh, guest complaints. And then we did, uh, we had our PETA factor. So pain in the ass factor for the owner. <laughs> and if we kind of did it as like a green, yellow, red, and if anyone was in there was um, red in all three categories, they were gone. We did not ask them to renew. Mm. Simple as that. If they were two out of three, 
we kind of had a conversation about it. And we, we literally got in the conference room, got every, all my rental managers in there, and we had this conversation. Um, well, if it was all green, we sent them a new contract. If it was all red, then we didn't ask them to come back. And then if it was in the middle, you know, there's two out of three, one out of three, something like that. We kind of had the conversation. And a lot of times it came to, uh, we kind of organized them in buckets. And one of the buckets was, I can still remember, it was like bucket four. And it was, you know, they can renew, but they had to make changes. They had to make um, upgrades to the property to be eligible for our program. And if they didn't make it, we didn't care. They were gone. If they made it, that was great. You know what I mean? And what we could do a lot of times is we, you know, we had like form letter all ready to go. But what we could also do is we could show them other, and that was the beauty of having condos, very similar properties. We could show them what other properties in their building were doing that were, you know, very, you know, exact same building, exact same view, exact same floor plan, exact same number of bedrooms and bathrooms, but just, you know, different furnishings and things like that. We could say, look, your property did 28,000. This property did 48,000. They probably, you know, we would make these suggestions or we would make these changes to your property. It probably only going to cost you another five to $10,000 to do it, but you can almost, um, you know, pay for itself, you know, in year one. And again, sometimes they did it, sometimes they didn't. Um, but it was an important part of the strategy to continually kind of get better and better and better. Mm. We called it pruning, right? You're pruning your inventory every year. I love that, dude. <laughs> That's so cool. Uh, what reminds me of real quick, going back to Padre again, we stayed there this past um, in June and, and uh, we stayed at the Tiki. Shout out to the Tiki. It's an old school, old school set of condos. And, and what's cool about it, cool about it is cool, it has like a, a front office attached to it. So it's kind of like a hotel, but everybody owns their own condo there, whatever. And man, we stayed in one. And the second, the second one we stayed there, and it's not been renovated since like 1970, right? The furniture is probably from the 70s, maybe the 80s. <laughs> you know the old wicker chairs and stuff like that and like the, the cheesiest um beach you know little paintings that were oh my god and anyway and some she sales i mean it was so bad but and it had a it had an ocean view right and they were and but it was it was kind of ugly and they were the, in peak season they were like charging 160 bucks a night which is good for me i got to get a place with ocean view for, for for freaking cheap but i was like man if i had this place i'd renovate this damn thing throw away all this shitty furniture um get rid of the popcorns um get, you know get rid of the shag guard whatever the hell it had and um i would i would be charging 300 bucks a night for this place yeah. it's because yeah. of freaking view but they're so just uh they don't care you know it's their second thing they've had it in the family for years uh passed down someone else's dad would just cash in a check there but so as oh man it's just it's just um I guess we see it from a different lens because we're we've been doing you know Airbnb and hospitality and we can't put grandma's furniture in places anymore. Well, when I when I remember going down to Ocean City at first and talking to realtors and you know about rentals, and literally the line that they told everybody was, "You don't want to put anything nice in here because it's just a short term rental." <laughs> Like, don't spend the money, like use the cheesy wicker furniture because you don't want to put anything nice because it's just a rental. And that was, that was the MO. That's, this is what realtors were telling the buyers back oh then. God. You know? <laughs> wow. So you just, you just took over the whole joint, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and look, it, it was, I, the timing was right. The timing was, you know, we were ready. The, everybody was ready for it. So that's why I think we were able to grow so fast. Um, is, you know, we were offering something a little bit unique, a little bit different. And again, I loved when people told me, Brooke, that's not the way it's done here in Ocean City. And I said, thank you. That's exactly what I'm going for. Mm. Can you, okay. Thank you so much for hopping on. This has been like so eye-opening. And, I, you know, I have uh, me and, and my, my partner, Federico, we have this, uh, our vacation, you know, uh, rental management company. So, of course, we're really excited about uh, talking to you after this and setting up a meeting with you and seeing what you can do for us. Can you give like any uh, maybe pricing how you how you charge people to, to for your services? Or Yeah. So we let me just kind of back up the. Ventory really, in a nutshell, it comes down to four parts. The first is data. We are building the largest database of vacation rental homeowners on the planet. So mm -hmm. again, we talked about before, it all starts with data. We have four data scientists on our team. That's all they do. They're going out there and getting the right data. Um, the second thing is we're a full marketing agency. So that marketing, that omni-channel marketing approach I talked to you about, we do that. We have an entire team. We've got copywriters. We've got graphic designers. 
We've got digital marketing experts. We have all these people that do it on your behalf, right? And this is all we do, right? Um, third thing is we've actually built a software platform. So we've built a CRM and marketing automation platform that ties this all together. We have our version. We built our version of Canva. So any kind of postcards and, and letter templates that you want to build out, there are all those templates already in there in the system. You can build it out and kind of self-manage if you want, if you decide not to use uh, our services. And then the fourth part of our platform really comes down to our team you get a dedicated partner success manager. So this is your senior strategic advisor. He or she, this is again, all we do. We help short the over 345 different companies grow their inventory. So we know what works, what doesn't work. We get to see in aggregate, like, you know, by just changing one word on a direct mail piece, how does that affect the response rates on those things? Have you changed one word on an uh, email? How does that affect things? So we get to see in, in aggregate how these campaigns are working. So that dedicated partner success manager is going to work with you kind of building out the strategy, understanding what your goals are and what do you, what do you want to achieve? And then they, help you build out the, the playbooks. So that, that wraps all together. So we have four tiers in our platform. They range from $300 a month all the way up to $2,500 a month um, and depending on what you want. But again, if you look at what the value, I mean, this is the biggest no brainer that in the, in the, in the world right now, if you look at the return on just one property, we talked about it before adding one property doing $50,000 in gross booking revenue, you're going to make between five and $7,500 uh, per year, for just one property. And then you have the opportunity to flip that contract and sell it if you choose for on average $33,000 Again, this is an absolute no-brainer. It's it's kind of like a money machine. You know, you put dollar bills on one end and twenty-five dollar bills and fifty-dollar bills are flying out the back end. Hmm. Nice, and and you have a live, let thrive discount for our listeners, right? There you go. <laughs> no, we seriously ha happy to do that. We uh, we'll give a, a free sixty-day trial um, on uh, on it, and uh, we'll also give five hundred uh, records, um, five hundred data records for free. Well, I'll be reaching out. <laughs> <laughs> one, one more serious question uh, to ask you, Brooke. Um, how much do you love Will Slickers? Oh, Will's awesome. Will, <laughs> did he tell you to say that? <laughs> yeah, Will's, Will's a great guy and a uh, big fan of his. And, uh, you know, every time I see him, you know, I love uh, love hanging out with him and um, big, big supporter of the, the Hospitality FM. So, yeah, that's part of us. We're on there, man. All right. Oh. Well, cool. Well, thank you so much, Brooke. At least yeah. he didn't. At least he didn't blackmail me. I think the last time we saw, I saw him, we were both a little intoxicated. So I'm glad he didn't blackmail me. <laughs> but thank you, thank well, you for he, not bringing that up. He sent us some videos. We'll put them in the uh -oh, show. Uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> hey, Will likes to party, man. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good time down in uh, down in Nashville for sure. So where can folks find you, Brooke? Yeah, real, real easy. Go to Vintory.com, V-I-N-T-O-R-Y.com, or you can find me on uh, LinkedIn. I'm pretty active on, on LinkedIn, again, under Vintory. Uh, and again, go to Amazon, uh, just go, or just uh, Amazon search uh, for my book, From Zero to 500 Properties in Five Years. Uh, again, you can purchase that on Kindle for five bucks or paperback for, for 15 bucks. And again, all proceeds go to charity. Thank you so much. Any more questions, Micah? Man, thank you for hopping on. Uh, you actually talking me into hopping into the management side. Do it, man. <laughs> Worth it. Good business yeah. to be in. Sweet, sweet. Oh, oh you, you touched on the recession. And you mentioned recession is probably maybe good for us, right? I mean, for uh, vacation rental. Oh, absolutely. Well, again, on the Managers. supply side, it's the greatest time to pick up inventory. Um, and then from the guest side, so I have some stats here for you. So, um, uh, the company I work after I sold my company, I went to work for a company down in Orlando. They've been in business since 2002. They uh, they were only down top line in 2008, 10%. So think about oh, it. Wow. Greatest recession this industry, this, this country has ever seen. And from a revenue perspective, they're only down 10%. Um, I'm uh, friends with uh, somebody that uh, worked at corporate at Wyndham as the CFO. Uh, and he told me they were uh, flat or even up 3% overall uh, in 2008. And then a gentleman I know that was down at Outer, Outer Banks that has one of the largest management companies down in Outer Banks. And he said he was slightly up in 2007, 2008, uh, top line. So again, vacation rentals, I would not say they're, uh, they're uh, recession proof, maybe recession insulated. 
Uh, but again, people want value. People want drive uh, drive to destinations. People will continue to take vacation rental vacations. They want value though. Uh, and if they're hurting for money, they're just going to put it on plastic because it's a God given right for them that they need to continue to have vacations. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, American dream, baby. All right. Well, thanks for hopping on, man. Yeah, we we look forward to doing a part two, especially after you got me my five hundred units. So. <laughs> Thanks, man. And we will hey. talk to you again soon. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. You have a good night. All right. Take care, guys. Later. Man, that was uh, very interesting, man. I've, uh, I think I'm going to hop in. Like I already told you, I have one that I'm arbitraging and turning into a management. And I have a few more that have been hit my, hit my, you know, people have been hitting me up on Instagram. Hey, you want to manage those? And I, usually I'll just send them to you. I'm like, oh, yeah. that, uh, <laughs> oh. but you know, I got a lot of people. I'm like, okay, I could take one or two. You know, I was like, I'll take one or two and then rest. I'll just pass them to you and Federico because I don't want to do that. But I'm like, man, he had a good point. If we're heading into a recession, it's good to have cash coming in and not only cash coming in, cash with very low risk. That is what I was thinking. I'm like, that's very low risk. You don't have any. We ain't on the hook for shit. I mean, just, really, hey, no risk, right? Yeah, just no about. Risk. So you know, I'm like, okay, I'll start. I can do a few couple of them, especially if we're in a recession. Like he, that real, that was really, really good stuff, man. Mm, mm. Yeah, and that was, uh, and and he he the way he started with arbitrage in a way, saying I'll rent it for you know <laughs> low ball offer, but that gets the hey you know screw you man I could rent this you know for double or triple, but I got the conversation started right, and, and so uh, he's not he's not an arbitrager you know he's a manager of short term rentals and uh, vacation rentals I'm sorry and um, but but the fact that he, and th- th- that's what's cool. He transitioned to helping others, you know, build their inventory. That's even less risk, right? You ain't got to do that. You ain't got to worry about, you know, bitching guests and, and people, and people right. breaking shit. He don't got to worry about that. He's just helping other people get their places. So they have to worry about that shit. So, yeah. and charging, you know, and charging a fee. Why do it for free? You know what I love most about this episode? It just kind of goes into the whole circle of short-term rentals, right? Like he, his focus was vacation rentals. And this is what I, I talked about this on uh, Mike Shrogan's podcast when I went on there. I'm like, man, there's so many forms of short-term rentals. There's vacation rentals. There's the Airbnb side where there's a bunch of mix of everything. And then you have corporate housing. And what I want to tell people is when he was talking about BRMA, that is a very, very good association to be a part of. I'm not a part of it because I'm not really in vacation rental markets, but I am a part of CHIPA which is Corporate Housing Providers of America because I'm in corporate housing areas that people need corporate housing. So joining those associations is huge. Like I just had Chippa reach out to me about arbitraging a house, you know? So they help you build your company up. So Chippa, VRMA, any of those associations, those are great places to join. Mm, yeah, yeah, get out there and um, and network. That's a huge part of it, right? And marketing, we like, we, we people, I mean, it's, it's funny. That a lot of people don't do very much marketing. And that's just that's just our industry, man. And and, and it's, it's like the most important thing. That's like Coca Cola spends fifty percent of their profits on marketing, right? Dude. I mean, they it's important, and you we don't do it. You got to get it back. I mean, <laughs> you know, and, and that's why, man. I'm like, I just got my final draft on my website, my Boostly site, and uh, man, I've been so excited about it, man, because I got like I'm setting up marketing templates. So as soon as it launches anyone who's ever stayed in my short-term rentals, I'm going to be blasting it out to them. Like, Hey, check out the new share BNB site. We just launched. Uh, if you ever wanted to book direct, you get your 10% off. Here's the code, you know, and that's immediate. I'm like, man, I can't wait. So marketing is funny. That's really been hitting me hard. Like, yo, I got to market, 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 get my mail chimp up and start doing advertising out. So yeah, <laughs> I, I'm excited about it, man. And I, I love, this is a really good episode. This really got me like, okay, I do need a couple more management properties. So that, <laughs> It's funny how we're at, we're kind of learning everything backwards in a way because we we jumped into this business as just it's not not even like a business right we started we just threw some properties on Airbnb and started profiting it wasn't a business yet it was just just making some money and then all of a sudden you know a lot more people get into it and then you got to start competing with other people and then and then learning how to do pricing and fixing their places up and then all of a sudden you have to hire people to help you then you got to learn how to be a manager then you got to learn how to be a ceo and then start <laughs> start getting people to 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 work for you effectively and then you got to learn how to market i mean it's like we're going to business school in reverse right 
at at the school of hard knocks but we're doing it in reverse and we're like oh shit you know we got to learn all these things that people that companies spend a lot of money for their marketing department for their um uh hr departments for all this stuff you know for and and so it, it i mean it's exciting and and it's it's scary in a way and, and a lot of people are going to jump out of the game because they got to know all these things and, and they don't do it and, and they're going to get eaten alive by by us killers yeah man i'm, <laughs> it, man. I'm loving it i can't wait man i'm gonna i'm gonna grab a couple management properties now after you said that because i do feel like because even though i asked him the question about arbitraging he's like isn't the end goal of arbitrage it just goes back to the owner eventually and i'm like yes i don't i just know don't know if it's a sellable business but management man, you can sell that all day so like you said there's so many people buying up management companies hell all you have to do is retain the customer you know uh so yeah man I'm, I'm very excited about this man i can't wait to see how it goes yeah man great episode i'm gonna hit him up right now i'm gonna send him a text message and, and get my 60 day free trial maybe he'll get 90 days for me because i'm llt you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> where can folks find us Micah? Hey, you can find us on IG at Live Let Thrive. Find us, uh, remember to hit our link tree below. Hit the subscribe button. Join the email list because we have a masterclass coming out next month on the 20th, August 20th. So check that out. And then every Wednesday, 730 Clubhouse, hop in, hop in the room. We always have some good topics. Last week was really great. Uh, so yeah, hop in and uh, join us up. And uh, yeah, Instagram, TikTok as well. And uh, we'll have some more content coming out for you guys. And thank you for continuing to listen to the LLT crew. Mm. We are out. Peace. Later. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Live, Let, Thrive. Be sure to tune in next week for all the latest in the world of Airbnb and all that entails. Bye-bye.